and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were this sort, we have a building of God, a house no made with hands, eternal, in the heavens. I love the fact that Paul says, for we know. We got to identify who is the we. Hmm. Because you might not believe what I say, the majority of denominations, they don't know this. They make reference to Jesus in, in the Gospel of John when he talks with his 12, with, with his little flock. I'm talking about my father's house and many mansions. So they think that we go in those mansions. Because they don't readily the other word the shows. They don't understand, or they don't want to understand, or ignore willingly or unwillingly. I really don't know this. That would be beyond me. That we are in the dispensation of grace since Acts 9. We are not in any way, shape, or form Israel or part of the 12 tribes. We are not part of the lost sheep of the eyes of Israel. And Jesus was not talking to us in the four Gospels. Even though whatever is written at four times, Paul wrote, is for our learning. So we can learn so much about Christ and his earthly ministry to Israel, how he fulfilled prophecy after prophecy after prophecy concerning the first coming of the Messiah, the Christos of Israel to his earthly people, Israel to the twelve tribes, and verify that indeed the book we study, the King James Bible, are the pure words of God, are the word of truth, because only God can prophesy centuries and centuries before events that were going to take place <laughs> centuries after. Literally, as he said, they would. My dear brothers, sisters and friends out there, ignorance can be cured by what? By reading and studying what the word of truth rightly divided Paul said in second timothy in chapter 2 in verse 15 to timothy who was taking care of the body of christ in ephesus study to show that self approved unto god so you don't do this to be approved by your brother or sister or the pastor or the bishop of rome <laughs> Unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly, correctly, rightly dividing what? The word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, the word of God. But sham, boy sham, profane and vain babblings, because they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now, before you think, oh, here you are, you know, you pontificating, you know, like you, you are the Pope, you know, no, no, no. I was in that state of ignorance all my life. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but it's the truth, I got to tell you. I was born and raised Roman Catholic in Italy, in Rome of all places, okay, where the Roman Catholic Church has got the seat, St. Peter, where the Pope is. I went through all the rigmarole, you know, where they, you know, you know sprinkled when I was a little kid, and I catechism, first communion, christening. I was in an, an altar boy, you know, for a period, for a period, then they checked me out. 
Because I was very naughty. Yeah, there we go, me. But anyway. <laughs> but then through the bad experience of uh, life, you remember, remember, you don't know me. I'm 75. And that period in the 70s, you know, it was all sex and drugs and rock and roll. But you know, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, all this uh, revolution. <laughs> revolution. <laughs> magnifying of the flesh but we didn't know I didn't know anything I didn't know the Bible no even a verse I mean you know in the Catholic mass sometimes some verses were quoted but out of context we never understood anything besides the fact that I grew up in the period in which the Roman Catholic Church was uh, officiating in Latin and the majority of the people they didn't even know what they were talking about anyway after some bad experiences, anyway, to cut it short, at the age of 23, I've been hooked in a denomination in Rome, Pentecost. You know. What did I know of the Bible? Nothing. I saw that I've been indoctrinated very good from those guys. And for a long time, there was in Italy, then in America, then in other parts of Europe, then in Australia, where I live now, in the last 30 years, I was, uh, you know, zealous. Pentecostal, time talker, blah, 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 blah. The point of the matter is, I had no idea about rightly dividing the world of truth. But 12 years ago, 12, 12 years ago, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The, the praise goes to you. I discovered the world of truth, rightly divided, and of course, the gospel of grace in this dispensation of grace, I believe it, praise God, to say it, share with the Holy Spirit without any man doing anything, the operation of God, according to scriptures. And since then, given also that now I'm a pensioner, I've been studying, reading, and studying, and putting together the dots, the, the pieces of the puzzle of the doctrine. So, I'm not saying to you, oh, you bad church boy. You don't know because. The, if your local authority, you know, spiritual authority, the pastor, the priest, the pope, the bishop, the cardinal, whoever it is, it doesn't preach and teach that according to the revelation of the mystery, very difficult that you're going to go home and study for yourself. But once you do, you see the difference between Christ according to the red letters, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how we fulfill something like 300 prophecies in his earthly ministry, which, as I said, proves that the Bible is the word of God. Because, for example, in the prophet Micah was prophesied that Christ was going to be born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. And nobody can prophesy of his own birth and, and then make it happen unless it's God doing it. <laughs> Not to mention, for example, when he, when he was on the cross, so many prophecies and you know seven cries of christ from the cross you go on psalm 22 and psalm in isaiah 53 just to mention two and you will see wow praise god we have the word of god christ indeed was the god man the incarnated god the word capital w seven times in this king james bible who became a man. He, he had a body in the likeness of simple flesh. But he never sinned. He was born by the power of the Spirit through the Virgin, fulfilling also Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman, you know. Think about this one moment. The Emmanuel, you know, the Virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which... In the New Testament, uh, in the Gospel, is, is interpreted means God with us, with us, Israel. And he said very clearly, I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when he talks about the mansions, in my father's house, and so forth, he's not talking about this. He's talking about rooms in the temple, in the new temple, in the new Jerusalem, which is the heavenly Jerusalem that comes down from heaven to be on earth because that's the destination of the redeemed of israel the remnant the saved israel of the future the israel of god all 
those guys in Israel that reject Christ as the Messiah, the Messiah King, they had to confess with their mouth, believe in their heart, he was indeed the Messiah, the Lord, the King of Israel, the prophet, the high priest, the shepherd of Israel. All those guys, his contemporaries, they are in hell now, you understand, already waiting to be brought to the great white throne judgment, the end, and then they're going to go to the lake of fire. But those in that time that believed a little flock, the disciples of the Lord, the twelve and other disciples, they are waiting for the resurrection and to be reigning with Christ in his earthly kingdom in the millennium. Peter once asked the Lord, he said, okay, Lord, you know, that's how the phrase, we left everything to follow you the last three years, you know, brother. What's that for us? You know? And Jesus said, in the restoration, so he was already talking about his second coming and when he's going to restore the kingdom to Israel, being king, great king, the glory king, the king of glory. Praise God. You're going to sit on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. They are 12 princes of the 12 tribes, Peter, James, John. Andrew, Bartholomew, Philip. Judah was there, but he committed, took his own life, you know, after he betrayed the Lord. And it's not very nice. He's the son of perdition. Hmm, what's so stuff about that? But no, no. He was substituted by the Spirit. The Spirit said, okay, this is the substitute, Matthias, you know, when they did it. Turim tum umina, they call it. You know, you, you can read in the book of Acts at the beginning. It's not Paul. Paul is the new apostle. Paul is born, uh, he's saved out of Jewish season, you know. He had to be saved with Israel, believe in Israel. No, he's got saved and received a great commission from the Lord. In Acts 9.15, he says, For he is a chosen vessel unto me. So, you believe in Jesus. Wonderful. You say you follow Jesus. You can't. But, you cannot. But, if you really want to follow Jesus, you can follow him now through the teaching from heaven that he's giving to us, the body of Christ, through Paul. It's not difficult to understand. Earthly minister of Christ to Israel, the prophet that Moses talked about, Robert said, he came to Israel, the great king, and the mystery, the mystery was hid in God for ages and generations, before, before the very foundations of the world, now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, and these holy apostles are Paul, Silvanus, Timotheus, but as new apostles, not only Paul. For Paul is the first and the pattern. And to, to him, Lord gives a tremendous amount of information, revelation, which is written in the 13 letters, which is here, you see, Romans all the way to Alemon. These are the instructions, the doctrine, the mind of Christ for us, the body of Christ. That's why I said, for we know. That, that was a long introduction, but it was necessary because many people that eventually will listen to this, I hope many, more, the more the merrier, I you say. They don't know this. They don't know that Christ was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now it goes to all men, Jews and Gentiles, because the book of Romans is written, God has put all on the scene. So he might have mercy upon all. He is the just and justifier of those who believe in Jesus and believe Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery. That's how we preach him. Romans 16, 25. It was hidden God, but now revealed, okay, for us. So Paul, as our apostle, apostle preacher, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity, demanded the Lord put in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Which gospel? The gospel of Christ. He is the one is telling us. 
We, the body of Christ, the new creature, the revelation of the mystery, the new creature, not born again, the new creature. No word of bad things, no works of sort. We simply are saved by grace through faith, without works on our part, so the man should boast. Believe in the operation of God, which saves us. How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, brothers and sisters and friends out there, I'm here to help, not to condemn, because the door of grace is open, wide open. You can be saved if you haven't believed yet. Now, wherever you are, without saying any prayer or doing anything, rituals or sort, you don't need a pastor, a mediator in the flesh. You've got Christ, the mediator, between you and God, by believing the gospel of the cross. Once you believe that Christ died for your sins, according to the scripture, he was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, to justify you, he saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1, 13 and Ephesians 4, 30. You are sealed at that point. So you're saved and sealed, you're secure. You're locked in Christ. <laughs> it's very different from, oh, you have to persevere to the end. In the Great Tribulation, they will need to do this, but no, we're not going to go there. We're going to go to heavenly places, because the Paul says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, this body that we have now, were dissolved, that's going to go up, you know. When I die, if I go in the grave, or I get cremated, it doesn't matter. My body is not there anymore. People forget me after a while, of course. Maybe my dear ones, uh, for, for a while they remember me, like I remember my father. But then when I die, and my sister die, my father's gonna be forgotten, and I'm gonna be forgotten. Everyone is gonna be forgotten. In the, in the space of one, two generations, people will go and visit those graves and look at these very old graves. Oh, 1949, he was born. That's me. <laughs> but if God knows you, if you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise because you simply believe they receive salvation by believing the gospel of Christ, God knows you. And Paul tells you, you have, we have a building of God. But listen what it is. And house no made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. A new body. That's what it is. <laughs> A new glorified body. Just like. First Corinthians 15, 51. It tells you. Now I'll show you a mystery. We shall all sleep, but we all shall be changed. We all shall be changed. When I grow up, I speak English. I got this, you know, it's a bit of a problem. Mm. We are the, the new creature. We have a heavenly destiny. We are the church which is his body. Christ is the head, the savior of the body. We are members in particular of the new creature, the body of Christ. Not to be confounded with members of the twelve tribes of Israel. Say, so, Bob, this is strange. You make a division. No, God made a division because in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There's been sin and rebellion and pollution in heaven with Satan, you know, and his angels, rebellion, you know, Lucifer, the anointed cherubim decided. So there's been pollution there, and on earth, you know, Adam and Eve fell, you know, because once again, this Lucifer fell on the earth, and guess what? He was there in the garden, the serpent. So practically, you got the creation of God, heaven and earth, uh, you know, corrupted, you know. So God, you think there's a problem for God? <laughs> then you don't know the Lord. He had a purpose, eternal purpose, hidden God to create a new creature, the body of Christ, and a program prophetic which is written in the prophetic program 
to regain the control of the earth through using Israel, but they save Israel or the future, not this one, man. Forget it. This is not the people of God. If you think this is Israel, the modern Israel is the people of God, you don't know the Lord, I'm sorry, and you don't know the scriptures too, man. Anyway, for we know that if our earthly house of, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan. Yeah, man. Ask me, I'm sanctified. Endlessly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. What a glorious destiny. This life is temporary for everyone. Oh, there are others people with lots of money and position in life, you know, that they think, ah, we got it all. They don't. Rich or poor, everybody dies. Those people that play God, we're little gods, you know, in those churches, they all make all this noise. But I know because I was one of them. They are not God because when uh, death will knock to their door, they cannot say, no, sorry, I'm God, you can't, you know, go away there. You got to go. So make sure you're saved now, okay? Because, you know, if you're not saved, you don't have a building of God and house not made with answers in heaven or in the heavens. You will drop to hell. H E L L, which is a parking lot until you be. You're going to be resurrected and taken to the great white throne judgment and thrown into the lake of fire because anyone there will go to the lake of fire together with the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, and death and hell, which is the second death. Oh, I don't believe this. Well, sorry. I believe what is written in the book, and I encourage you to do the same. If you're going to believe all these hell deniers and uh, soul sleep, universalists, and there are some really making a lot of money because they got hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, whatever it is. Don't be stupid, all right? Because your eternal life is a stake. Your, the salvation of your never dying soul. Because God has accomplished all that was necessary, required to save your soul. But the death of Christ is better is the resurrection. And once you believe this gospel, He, God, the Holy Ghost, puts you into Christ. And there you're safe for eternity. Praise the Lord. Your life is it with Christ in God, Paul said. When Christ who is alive shall appear, then... We shall also appear with him in glory. Wow. And by the way, he says, For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. <laughs> You're not going to wait where a villa, a mansion, a room. It's a new body, a glorified body. It so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Adam and Eve. Hmm. Adam was created in the image and likeness of God. And God covers himself with light. So Adam and Eve, they were naked but were no shame because the light that God gave them was a covering. But after the fall, the light went and they became opaque and they started to see. It. And they realized they were naked, they were ashamed. You know the story in Genesis. If you believe it, or don't believe it, well, that's the problem. I encourage you to believe. So we don't want to be found naked. We want to have this wonderful new body that God, the Christ, has prepared for us. And just give glory to Him. It's 24 minutes. I think this is enough. Make sure that you believe that he died for our sins, 
was buried there was again the third day for a justification believe what is written in first corinthians 15 1 to 4 and romans 4 25 ephesians 2 8 9 Galatians 1 4 god saves you and seals you ephesians 1 13 14 ephesians 4 30 king james bible i pray that you will do that believe which is not a work but you need to believe. The key is in believing. Because God has done it all, but if you don't believe it, you miss the, the, the bus, the train, the, the plane, whatever it is. You miss eternal life. Or you might be very religious and going through all these rituals. God doesn't even know you. If you don't have uh, the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you, Romans 8, 8 and 9, you don't belong. Uh, the seal of the Lord is sure, the, the foundation of God is sure, the Lord knows those who are His. And to be His, you need to be in Christ. And to be in Christ is required that you believe this glorious gospel of grace. Or, if you want to call it the gospel of grace of God, Acts 20, 24, the gospel of Christ, or Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the power of God unto salvation, the cross. We stop here. Have a great day. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. Amen.